So we have a pipeline here with my shipping Docker repository, and this has a Jenkins file that makes use of Docker pretty extensively. So what I wanna do is actually show a simpler Jenkins file that does not use Docker, and we'll see how that'll work out within our Jenkins server. So first thing I need to do is create a new pipeline, but of course we need a repository with a Jenkins file. So if I have this auto discover repositories with a Jenkins file, it's not gonna find one. So first things first, I'm just actually gonna create a new repository in the shipping Docker organization. I'll just call it simple Jenkins, or Jerkins. Uh, I'm gonna keep that autocorrect because that's sort of amazing. We're gonna say a Jenkins file set up with no Docker. I'll make it public in this case, and that's it. Okay, so I'm gonna copy and paste this, and then over here in Sublime Text, I actually have a project, I just called it Jenkins, but it's the Laravel application, completely standard, nothing is done to it, I've just created the application, but it has tests so we can see how that works. I think that's over here. So I can do vendor bin PHP unit, and that'll run the two unit tests that come out of the box with Laravel, and we can see that it's running and working, great. So here I need to get init, and do get remote add origin and the uh, item we added there. Then I'm gonna do git push dash u origin master to get this code up in that repository. Uh, whoops, I actually need to add everything, right? So I'll do git status and we have everything there. So git add all, first commit. And then we can do git push dash u origin master. Okay, great. So that code should be up here, but there's no Jenkins file yet. So that's the first thing we're gonna do here. We're gonna create a new file called Jenkins file. Okay, so we have an empty file here. Let's see how to start this. So I'm just gonna paste this in from a snippet and I'm gonna set the syntax to groovy. We're gonna say it's a groovy script and we're gonna say node master. So this is actually, as of this recording, a little bit of the older style of a way to define pipelines with a groovy script with a Jenkins file. The newer stuff isn't so well documented, so I've only seen a few examples, so I'm not gonna do it yet. But I'll explain to you what's happening here and the ideas here will go off to the newer syntax, which is not even a different syntax, it's just a different um, way to write the same thing. So we're gonna say node master, and all this means is that I'm gonna run this on the master install of Jenkins. Jenkins can have a master and slave setup where the slaves will spin up and run some jobs and spin back down, or they might not even spin back down, but they might be the ones where jobs are run on instead of the master Jenkins installation. Now I only have one installation, that's by default the master, so that's the one that's gonna run our jobs. So within here, I'm gonna add a try catch block. And then I'm also gonna do a finally block in case we need to do any cleanup. Now, so far this is very similar to the Jenkins file we used in the Docker series, and it's gonna to continue to be pretty similar, except we're not gonna use Docker, of course. So I'm gonna set these stages next. I'm gonna set the first stage to be build. You can name this whatever you want, of course. This is basically just what we need to run in order to get our code dependency so that we can run tests or do whatever we need to do with it. So I'm gonna do checkout SCM. So this should know that we're using Git for the SCM, so the source code management, and it's gonna check out the correct branch and everything we push to. And then we can run commands in it. So I'm gonna do the shell command, and the first thing we're gonna do is just composer install. So that should install from the composer.lock file and grab the dependencies. And if I wanted to, I could also build static assets. So if I had npm or gulp installed on the server as well, then I could do something like npm install and gulp production or something like that. But I'm not gonna build static assets in this case. But if that's something you need to do or want to do in your setup, you can do that as well. Okay, so after stage build, we're gonna move on. If the build stage succeeds, we're gonna move on to test. Now test is gonna be a pretty similar thing. We're just gonna run another shell script here, right? We're gonna use shell and just run some command. In this case, that's gonna be the vendor bin PHP unit command, and that's it. So uh, PHP unit will come from the vendor directory because composer install will grab it. So we don't need to worry about installing PHP unit separately in the server, but we will need to install composer and PHP for that matter, but that'll be coming up next. And the test stage, I think will just be that. We're just gonna let it run the PHP unit test. And just notice that I'm running this relative to the directory where the code is in. So check out SCM, we'll check out the code and CD inside of it. So anything we run in shell commands here is gonna be relative to our code directory. Now, what we do next is completely up to your use case. And I actually, for our demonstration, don't have a use case here. But one thing I do like to do is deploy. So you might want to package your applications some more. This might be a place where you actually build your static assets, or this might be a place where you build your application into some kind of file and push that up to some place to keep your artifacts, maybe Amazon S3 or something like that, or you might want to deploy. When I deploy here, I typically kick off an Ansible job. So I might actually run something like Ansible 
playbook-i, and I'll have something like an Ansible host file, and the playbook might be ansible deploy.yaml. This, of course, will assume I have an Ansible directory in the repository, and I have Ansible set up to do stuff. And this could possibly work for you. I like to do this. I like to run Ansible jobs from Jenkins because it's a really convenient place to do tests against a server, right? Ansible is really good at that, and we can use it to do things like deploy or set up a server or anything like that. So I'm actually going to comment this out and just have nothing in the deploy stage, except for this phony we are deploying um, shell script. I'm just going to echo the words we are deploying. Okay, so catch and finally, I'm going to do nothing in here. I don't have any cleanup to do in finally, but in catch, maybe we could do something like uh, spit out an error, but I'm not going to do anything like that now. What you want to do here is up to you. All I really want to do here is just show you kind of a simpler Jenkins file here and show you how to not use Docker if you don't want to. So we know this is going to run on the master node on our Jenkins server, but our Jenkins server does not have Composer, it doesn't have PHP, and of course it doesn't have Ansible, but I'm not even going to go there. What we're going to want to do is install PHP and Composer. So before we're doing that, we're going to let Jenkins discover this and try to run the commands here. We'll see that it'll fail. So over here, we know the add of the Jenkins file, we're going to push that up. And then back in here in Jenkins, we can have it discover that repository. So auto discover Jenkins file, already discovering, and back to pipelines. Great, so simple Jenkins. It's seen that, it's already tried to run it, duration is less than one second, and what we're probably going to see, well actually what we're going to see is that we have some bad syntax inside of the Jenkins file itself. Oh, and my catch doesn't have an error message, it's supposed to catch that error. So I'm just going to catch the error and just rethrow it, just so Jenkins knows that there was an error and that it should stop building here if whenever the error occurs. So let's see, can add that. All right. All right, we got run number two. Let's go check it out. Build has already failed because Composer installed. There's no Composer on that server. All right, so I know that the IP address of the server is as follows, and we can log into it and see what's up there. Okay, so we have two jobs. We need to install PHP, and we need to install Composer. So I'm gonna add the repository PPA, Andre PHP, FK update, and then from there we can install all the PHP stuff that we need. So that'll be PHP 7.1 CLI, PHP 7.1 curl, PHP 7.1 SQLite 3, I believe. And the last one I'll do is PHP 7.1 MySQL. So I'm not going to install a lot of PHP stuff, just the ones we need for this project, and these are really minimal. And notice I also did not install PHP FPM because we're not actually doing any web requests into the application that will actually go through PHP FPM. So we just need PHP CLI so that we have that because the unit tests are just run through the CLI. Even if you use Laravel's Dusk to spin up the headless browser, the headless Chrome browser, that's still headless. It doesn't go through our web request through PHP FPM. That's still all in PHP CLI. All right, so which PHP? PHP that should be, I get 7.1. And now I just need Composer. Now for that, I'm going to change over to user root and I'll run the following command, which just reads the file, which gets the Composer installer, pipes it through PHP, so PHP installs it and runs that command, and we can set the installation directory as user and bin, and the file name as Composer. And running that as root is just a little bit easier than just using sudo there, because it does a few commands on either side of the pipe here. All right, so I'll exit, and I'll say which Composer, and now we have Composer and we have PHP, so let's head on back over here, and tell this to build a third build from it and see what happens. Okay, so I have some missing PHP stuff that I do actually need. Uh, MB string and xdom, which I think is the XML package. So that would be PHP 7.1 XML and PHP 7.1 MB string. And I'll actually do PHP 7.1 icon V as well. All right, back here, refresh it. Open build four. All right, it's doing the composer stuff. That'll take a second. After that, it'll run our unit test. And oh, good. We can see I have an issue here. I didn't regenerate the key. So back to our code. After I do composer install, I want to do a shell command. So what I need to do here is copy.env example, and I'm going to name it.env, and I actually need to copy it. And then after that, we do another command here where we do artisan key generate. Now, I don't have any environment variable stuff that is specific to this file yet. If I do, then I need to grab a .m file, maybe from Amazon S3, like you saw in a previous video. But for now, I'm just going to copy the example one, and I'm going to generate a new key so we don't run into that error. Let's exit here. 
So Jenkins file creates.env and creates new key. So I don't care that that key will change every time I run my tests either. Now, if you have tests that require a specific key to be used there, like if you're encrypting data and need to de-encrypt it in a unit test, that might matter for you, but for me, it does not. That should have kicked off build five since we pushed up to it and we have a commit there that does it. Artisan not found, we'll head on over here and we just need to add PHP there. Head back over to Jenkins to see we likely have a new build. And we do. All right, so this is copying the end file. We'll just see this update as it goes. And then we see it finish. So let's go to build. So general SCM, the command we used, which was just check out SCM, gets the SCM, does another shell script. We have a composer install and that finishes. And then it copies the environment variable and then it generates a new key. And we see the application key spit out here in the standard out. Move on up to test. It's just a single command, vendor bin PHP unit, and it runs the test and then deploy. Now we have the deploy stage, whatever that might be. Right now we just echo, we are deploying and it does that. Now, like I mentioned, you might want to have something more complex there. You will have something more complex there. I usually kick off an Ansible job here and Ansible can do whatever it needs to do to deploy on the server. But you can see we have a much simpler Jenkins file here. It doesn't involve Docker at all. It just runs PHP right on the server. So the only thing you need to worry about then is that our Jenkins server actually needs the proper items on it. So you might want to match the PHP version you're using in production on your Jenkins server as much as possible to match those environments because it runs directly on the Jenkins server as user Jenkins when you have items in that Jenkins file. And that's one reason why I like using Docker throughout the entire life cycle from development to testing here and usually into production if I can as well, because then you get a really consistent environment and you don't really have to worry about adding stuff to the base OS installation that your Jenkins installation is also on.